Welcome to Family University. This is now the January edition of Family University. We hope that your families had a healthy and safe uh, holiday. And we also want to say Happy New Year to everyone and welcome back. A um, couple of things. Uh, I, let me just see if Dr. Ellis is on because if Dr. Ellis is on, I'm sure he'd like to say hello. Um, I don't see Dr. Ellis, but I did get a message from Dr. Ellis to let you all know that in case he was late or anything, because he is really super busy, which is fine. But he did want me to say hello to everyone and that he's really happy that you guys are here on Family University and we're super excited um, for everything that's going on in the community and how we are continuing to support our community in not just the academics, but also making sure that everyone knows the supports that are available to them. And this is where we like to do that a lot in Family University but just let you guys know everything that is available. Una vez más, tenemos traducciones disponibles en español and in Haitian Creole, we do have translations available. Solamente le tiene que dar al icono que tienes un globo abajo y les puede dar uh, donde dice español y van a escuchar la presentación en español, pero mirándonos nosotros. Así que dale al, al icono para cambiar el idioma. You can go ahead and click on that globe to change the language. And then you can go ahead and listen to this conversation in the language of your preference. And remember, if you have any questions about anything at all, definitely go ahead and hit that Q&A button. We would love to hear your questions. That's what we're here for, to help the community have an understanding of what it is that is going on in the district and also in your community. Because sometimes if you don't know what's out there, it's really hard for you to take advantage of it. And that's what we wanna do. We want you to be aware of what's happening in your community. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started because like I said, we do have a great family university today. I'm very excited because the topic we're gonna talk about today I always wonder about, so we're going to do a couple of housekeeping things or a couple of things that we usually talk about, and it has to do with the district website. We want to make sure that everyone has a good understanding as to what we have on the district website, so let's just take a look at the website real quick. This is our district website, and our district website has a ton of information that is periodically updated, so please make sure you check it out. There's always something new that's popping up in there, and it has a ton of resources and information that is right at your fingertips at any time that you may need it. One of the things that I do want to make sure that you do know is that you also have translations available on the district website. So if you would prefer to listen to the conversation in Spanish or to read the, the, the information in Spanish or in any language, essentially, all you have to do is click in this area here that says translate. And when you click on it, it's going to give you all these options. So you have a ton of options. Uh, since I know Spanish, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Spanish um, link. And then you'll notice the entire website is now in Spanish, including if you click into links, you'll see that they change into Spanish. So that's really important because it'll give you a chance to be able to see the information and the language that you choose to read it in. So make sure you take advantage of that. Remember, anything that you click that's like a document, it won't translate that document. So if you do need any translations of any kind, feel free to email the school district or the one of the buildings and they will let you know how to be able to get translations for anything that you find on the district website. We wanna make sure that our district is aware and our community knows everything that's going on in our district. That's really important to us. So a couple of important things that I wanna note for everyone are the COVID-19 resources. We are coming off of uh, the holidays. It's been a pretty um, intense week coming back to school. We're just, we're happy that we're back in the buildings. We're happy to have your, your our children back. We call them our children, but your children, um, our students, we're happy to have them back. But we also want to make sure that everyone is safe at all times because safety is definitely key and the health of our children. So definitely make sure that you check out the COVID-19 uh, resources uh, page, which you will find right on the district website. And in here, you will find all the latest information that has to do with, um, with COVID-19, including our New York State Department of Health COVID-19 report card that gets uh, periodically updated as well, as well as state and federal local guidance, which just recently changed. So make sure that you do check this out when you do have a chance. So if we click on here on the resources, you'll see 
that we have a lot of information that just came out. So definitely take a look at it. And if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to your building administrators. They are there to help you and will be more than happy to assist you. Uh, the next thing we want to make sure that you know is that you do have the parent portal available. Make sure that you go ahead and click into the parent portal. There is a lot of information on the parent portal, including your child's schedule, um, grading information, teacher information. There's so much information in there that you can get, and it's pretty easy to get it. Now, again, we go through this all the time. If you ever want to find out how to be able to find this information um, for the parent portal in particular, you want to visit where it says departments, and you wanna to go to management information systems. And in the management information system, we have a whole area here for parent portal, how to register, okay? Breaks that, it breaks it down step-by-step. Step. And then you also have the student portal, which actually is a lot easier to log into because you could just you know, put in the codes and everything. And you put in the nine digit ID for your child, all nine digits. And if you're like, well, I thought there was only six, you're right. But well, there's actually three zeros in the front. So make sure you add those three zeros. And then you use that temporary password, all lowercase. Okay. Student 2019. That is the password to get in. So again, you want to use the full nine digit ID. And then you want to go ahead and write this in. And also make sure you're visiting the correct link. You know that you're in the correct link by clicking on it. And then over here, it'll say student portal. If it says parent portal, if it says anything else, you may not be in the right link. And that's why you probably can't get in. So make sure you're visiting the correct link and that you're entering the information just as the way we showed you. Follow it step by step. And if you are having any issues with your parent portal or not, not your parent or both of them, actually, if you're having any issues with parent portal or student portal, you can always send an email to er-data at ercsd dot org. They are fantastic ladies. They're, they're ready and willing to help you. So definitely reach out. Now, remember, you might want to give it a, a 24 to 48 hour um, turnaround on that because there are two fabulous ladies and a lot of people in the district. So we want to make sure that we give them some time, but they are pretty quick um, when it comes to assisting. So definitely check out this page so that you can get that information. Uh, the digital equity survey. It is available right now on the district um, portal. So go ahead and visit the parent portal and you can go ahead and take the digital equity survey so that you can give your input. You know, we wanna make sure that we have information coming from our community. It's very essential because this is your school district and we wanna make sure that we are meeting the needs of our children. So make sure that you definitely fill out that digital equity survey. If you do not fill it out on the, the portal, you will be getting a paper copy from your buildings. So keep that in mind, just fill it out, send it back, put it in your child's backpack and it'll be scanned into our system. So definitely let your voice be heard, fill out those surveys. All right, now the last thing that we have is we always like to mention the Finkelstein Memorial Library. Finkelstein Memorial Library is a fantastic resource that we have here in our district. And I always wanna make sure that we mention it. Um, couple of updates due to COVID, the library is only doing window pickup at this time. And we, they have put a pause on their homework help and their tutoring. So just be really patient with them and they will be coming back to it as soon as they are able to do it in a safe manner. Uh, we also are gonna be sending out a remind message to all the enrolled students in the district, their families, to make sure that they have access to signing up for a library card. You can actually sign up through the school district. And we do, um, we do your residency verification directly from the district, you know, with your permission. And then we can go ahead and they can give you guys a library card, which is a great resource. So Finkelstein Memorial Library will actually be with us in February to talk all about literacy um, and what the library offers and how they can be there to assist you as a community. And then of course, we wanna talk about the adult services. They do have virtual adult programs. Now I have to say, these programs are very near and dear to my heart because I take it to a personal level. I don't just speak about it, but my mother actually went through these programs. My mother just became a citizen last um, December. She officially got sworn, I think it was December or November. 
she officially got sworn in and it was a very exciting thing for us because you know she's been working on it really hard but the good thing is that she was actually able to get her services through Finkelstein library it is completely free okay all you have to do is just go ahead and call this number 845-538 three four two zero and they will go ahead and give you information about their virtual um citizenship classes okay make sure that you guys do reach out they also have english classes so if you're interested in learning english go ahead and you know join these classes or maybe you want to learn spanish they also have those too so go ahead and reach out to anna diaz um, in Finkelstein to go to find out more information about these services. And again, we are going to be talking about it more on the, the February Family University. So definitely check out all of these resources. All right. So I have been talking for a little while. Let's see. Uh, okay. So I see Patricia, you said, I noticed on the school website, I did not see the upcoming recess break, for example, spring break. And will there be a break in February? In the past, the kids are off the week of President's Day. That's a great question. You know, Patricia, thank you for that question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the district website. So on the district website, if you ever wanna know about time or what days are kids off, you can always just click here where it says calendar. So under calendar, if I go over to February, because we wanna know, are we off for a whole week in February or not, okay? If you go down to February, Look at that, it's not even on this one. So I will have to follow up with that, but that's okay. Because we do have also here under district, when you go to district calendars also, we do have here where it says, view the 2021-22 instructional calendar. And in here, you'll be able to find that information right away. So now for February, 2022, uh, you are the kids have off from the 18th 18, 19, 20, and 21. So they are off for Feb for President's Day weekend, but they're not off the full week. I feel like we haven't been off a full week in a couple of years, to be honest with you. The last time we had a full week was in 2011, only because I had to ask for days off for my honeymoon. That's the only reason why I know, and that was in 2012. So <laughs> I know we haven't had a full February week since then. So um, yeah, so that's those are the days, but we do have a full week coming up in April, so you get to enjoy the bright sunny days outside uh, in April. So that is when the dates are available. But if you ever want to look at the calendar um, and you think, oh, it's it's not all there, it, it, it's all there, but we have to just look it up in a different section. But we will make sure that we do get that fully updated, Patricia. So thank you so much for that feedback. Uh, ¿Por qué este año escolar no enviaron los calendarios a la casa? Buena pregunta. That's a great question. It's saying, why didn't the, why weren't the calendars sent to the house um, this year? Why haven't they sent the calendars? That's a great question. And that's something that we can definitely follow up on. And when I do get the right answer for that, we will go ahead and make sure that, the, that we can go ahead and let you know. Um, as of now, I don't have that question to answer, unfortunately. Okay, so let's see. All right, so that those were all great questions. So real quick, let's um let me get rid of all of these windows and let's do a quick update on everyone here. Couple of questions I want to know. First of all, what grade bands are your kids in? So what what grade bands are we looking at? Are is your child in a K three building, uh, a four six, a seven eight? a 912 and feel free in the in the chat area and the Q&A why don't you go ahead and tell us what school you guys are from let's give a couple of school shout outs who is here today all right we do have a couple of k3s i see a number of k3 people are on here so oh we got ecc wow we have the eagles i think that's what they call it have kids in all set oh you have kids in all sections that's awesome so let's see. So are you on the south side or the north side? The north side is usually like the Ramapo High School, the Griffins, and the south side are the Tigers. So are your, are your children future Tigers or Tigers or Griffins? Let's see. Anyone else want to share with which grades their student, their children are in? 
This is great. I love it when people answer questions on live. One in Hempstead, eight in Pomona. Oh, a one, a grade one, grade eight, and grade 10. Oh, nice. So, okay, they're all Griffins then. That's awesome. It's a great place to be. So let's check it out. So the majority of the people here are in the K-3s, but we do have a good showing from all of the different grade bands. So we just talked a little bit about, you know, our district understanding of what's happening in the district in terms of like the website, the portals and all of that stuff. So let's get a quick gauge right now. Um, I'm just curious to see which of the following topics do you guys feel like you want to know more about? Because I feel like I talk about these continuously every month, which is great because I'm going to keep on talking about this because there's always going to be somebody new. I love it when new people show up. Um, but we want to make sure that we're, we're touching on things that you want to hear more about. So is it navigating the website? Is the website you feel like something that you're like, okay, I see it. It's so much information. Sometimes it's like too much to dive into. And that's okay because we can break it apart and we can find things depending on how, what we need to know. So we have the website, um, the parent portal. I know parent portal is, is a lot of information and a great resource, but sometimes you're like, ah, there's a couple of steps and every single tool has a different step. Like I need more of an insight on that. Um, then we have uh, the student logins. Do we need more student logins? You know, like what, what kind of information do you wanna hear? So let's look at the, the Q and A's. Oh. Dr. Lowe is here. Dr. Denise Lowe, state monitor, shout out. So Dr. Denise Lowe is one of our state monitors in our district. So we are so excited to have you here today, Dr. Lowe. And Luis Rodriguez is saying, primer grado en la escuela de ECC y mi otro hijo está en el cuarto grado en la escuela de El Dorado. Ah, you have one on each side. Tiene uno en cada lado de, de distrito. Así que es una buena cosa para escuchar y muchísimas gracias por um, compartir esa información. So I'm going to go ahead and end this poll. And it looks like the biggest thing right now is parent and student portal, which we're going to keep on talking to everyone about it. Um, we're going to, you know, if you guys have any ideas of other ways that you would like to see us be able to share this information, definitely let us know. You know, we're open to that. We're all about trying to reach the community as many ways as possible and as safely as possible, of course. Okay, so let's go ahead. It says, um, why didn't the school give me a call after COVID quarantine? That's a great question. You should probably, for a question like that to be answered, the best thing you could do is probably reach out directly to the buildings and then you can speak to one of the administrators in the building and they will be more than happy to give you any kind of information related to COVID and quarantine and everything. So definitely reach out so that they can answer your questions. So let's go over now to our guest. Family University presents Star Renaissance. It's a collaborative presentation by East Rampel Central School District and our Lower Hudson Regional Information Center. That's a mouthful, Calabrese. <laughs> It certainly is. And if That's I add at Southern Westchester BOCES, it gets even longer. Oh, my goodness. So we, we do have Carolyn Calories here. And I'm so excited to have you here, Carolyn, because you are actually a pretty familiar face to our teachers. So you work a lot with our teachers. About how many years would you say you've been working with East Round Call? Uh, I want to say I was coming back from maternity leave with my son, and he is 15. So it's been a long a long road with so, lots so, of different products. I think it's safe to say that you know our district very well. Yes. So I'm yes. really glad that you're here to talk to us about Star Renaissance. It's something that we hear about a lot. It's something that we see our kids being tested on all the time on Star Renaissance. We see, you know, data everywhere. If any, if anyone has ever visited any of our buildings prior to COVID, you'd probably see these red, green, yellow, you know, graphs all over the place yellow okay, green red green yellow there's one more color blue. Blue. blue thank you so you have all these different colors and you're just like okay you your kid probably could tell you what their score is but what does all that stuff mean like it's it's a lot so carolyn is here from the lyric as we like to call it um and she is one of our consultants that we work with very frequently she 
really assists us with a lot of professional development in our district. She works directly with teachers, with administrators like myself. She works with a lot of us in order to be able to give information and to help us get strategies and build these skills to help us help your child. So one of the biggest things that she helps us with is Star Renaissance. So she knows a lot about Star Renaissance. So I am so happy to have her here because she is going to tell us the major secret. Like what is Star Renaissance? <laughs> How is this going to help my child? How is this work out with everything? Should I be scared about this thing? So with all due, you know, I'm passing the podium <laughs> over to you, Carolyn. Okay. Great. Thanks, Sonia. Um, could you forward probably two slides? That's good. Yeah. We're just going to talk a little bit about good evening, everybody. And thanks for having me. i um, happy to be here. This is a wonderful uh, group, a, a good good attendance for tonight. That's fabulous. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about the assessment, how it how it sort of works, why East Ramapo gives it, um, and, and what's your students experience. So the the primary reason for a district to use an assessment like Renaissance Star is what they call a universal screening. So what that means is that all of the students, um, K-12, take the same type of assessment. Now that's not usually how it happens in the, in the school buildings. Everybody has their own unit tests and tests at the end of lessons. And of course the regions and the New York state tests, but none of those tests runs the whole, um, the whole length of your school district, so K-12. So that's called the universal, scre universal screening so that those folks, uh, so that the staff can find out a little bit more about your students and they, um, they, East Ramapo takes this assessment four times a year. So generally in the fall, maybe early winter, kind of late winter, and then in the spring. And it's really just to determine kind of a, a, a benchmark. How are the students doing? Are they growing from one to the next? How well are they growing? Is what we're doing with them working? If we're giving them extra support, if we're giving them some challenges. So after the screening, teachers look at the reports, likely with Sonia or myself, and they do some instructional planning. And what that means is, what, is, what do my students need? So based on that test, what do my students need? If there are students that need more support, they use STAR to progress monitor, which means not only are the students taking the test four times a year, but they might take it a little more often because we're trying to follow and make sure that the supports that we're giving the students are working because we don't wanna to get to the end of the year and find out that all of that time um, was not helpful. So they can monitor their progress. Um, also within the system, we can track standards mastery. So New York state standards, really, really critically important so that teachers can track who's mastering which standards and which standards they might want to spend a little bit more time on. Predicting state test performance for grades three through eight. The system has some, some links to new, the New York state test and it can tell you that there's a certain score that you can get in STAR and that will make you a level three or a level four. So they have a little bit of a prediction so that districts, uh, districts can keep, uh, keep their finger on the pulse of that type of data. And many districts have been using this system for a long time and found this uh, feature particularly helpful because we didn't have state tests in uh, the spring of 2020 and we had some modified tests in 2021. But if the students were taking these STAR assessments, we could really keep track of that. And it was a really a very consistent assessment. Uh, oh, okay. You can also measure, go ahead. Sonia. Yeah, just, just a quick question. Okay, so how, since you work you know, regionally, how many other districts in this area use this same product? So I cover Putnam County, Rockland County and Westchester County. And I have 20 districts that I support that use this product. So That's a lot a of question. districts in our area actually use this. So, yes. so the reason why we use this is because it really helps us to be able to gauge or understand where our kids are in terms of learning their learning standards with the state. That's correct. So when you say the That's universal, correct. the universal screener, that means everybody's starting at the same place. No, um, we have a, um, we have another slide after this one. 
that will show how everybody is working on their own um, on their own path. So oh, the last okay. piece of this kind of this the last piece of this little cog is measuring growth. So we can determine whether students grew from the September to the November assessments. As I said oh, before, okay. did they grow? Did they grow enough? Um, and so it's just we're looking at the students' achievement, and then the screening starts again. And so the cycle continues each uh, every couple of months. So the next slide, I think, has but just the... one more question. Now, sure. one person was asking, does this, you know, does this have to do with like grade, like K, like the kindergartners? Do kindergartners get screened also? They... Yes, they do. They do. Yes, okay. the kindergarten, kindergarten and first grade primarily have a an assessment that's completely read to them. So they're they're able to identify uh, letters and numbers and um, um, uh, sh sounds and shapes and things like that, and it's completely read to them. Great. Okay. Great so question. then, thank you. So let's uh, thank you to our audience for and asking. That. Next one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So, so this is the breakdown. So students generally take uh, the star reading and star math from. Sometimes it's about second grade and up, maybe some first graders. Um, so the star reading and star math, each one has 34 items on the test. So they usually take them on separate days just so they don't get too overwhelmed. Um, so there are five domains. So reading comprehension and, and uh, different types of domains. And then star math has geometry and algebra, even down to the lower grades, there's some of that pre um, pre-algebra type of thing, um, and also just some measurement data, that type of thing. So on the right, you'll see what I referenced as the early literacy. So that has three domains in it. So it's a, a, a smaller test. It's 27 items. And these are for beginning readers who don't read independently or need those early literacy skills assessed. So the reading is not read to students because you're assessing reading. But the early literacy is measuring some of those basic alphabetic concepts, um, um, being able to sound out words, things like that. So um, that is read to them. So that's one of the major differences. And your students between probably in first and second grade will transition from one to the other. Great. All right. These are also, um, we talked a little bit about these are also available to be taken in Spanish, and that's at the discretion of your school building or your teacher, depending on the type of class your student is in. Uh, it could be given to the student in Spanish. Great. So if, um, if anyone here is listening and they think, OK, well, my child might do really good in Spanish because they understand it better in Spanish, definitely have that conversation with your child's teacher. And they can go ahead and tell you also what their assessment is of your child as well. And then you can work together to make sure that you meet the needs of your child. So, you know, STAR is pretty much just assessing the skills of your child in the five areas, like you said. And then based on that information, like we were showing, and I'm just going to backtrack a little bit, you know, because it impacts, you know, the way that we instruct your child, because we want to make sure that your child is, is getting the instruction that they are in need of. Think of it like a custom plan for your child. So that's one of the things that, that I know that I like about STAR Renaissance and everything with the testing. Okay, so you okay. want to go to the next slide? The next one, yeah. So STAR is a computer adaptive test. So it's not exactly like the New York State test or it's not like any of the, the end of the lesson test. What happens is that students start out with a question at the beginning and it's either a question at their grade level or maybe a question um, where they left off the last time. And if they get the correct, if they have a correct response to that question, they get presented with a more difficult question. All right, so you see how this is sort of working. You got a green question, you got the second question correct. That third question, we reached a little bit high and they, the student got it incorrect. Right, so the back down a little bit and back up again. So each time the student answers a question, they will get either a more difficult or a less difficult question, depending on their response. And there'll be a mix of questions. There'll be fractions questions and multiplication questions and you know all math questions on the one test and then all reading on the other test. But it'll be a mix of different types of skills. And you'll see that even a student that is performing kind of up at that higher level has gotten some of the questions incorrect. So the idea of this, this 
assessments is to figure out where your student is most comfortable learning, right? So they may be missing some skills, they may be um, higher in certain areas, they may be great multipliers, but not dividing is a little bit of a struggle or they may struggle with word problems, but they're really good with, with any kind of um, computation. So this system will go back up and down, up and down, up and down. So sometimes when the students uh, in the area were taking their tests remotely, it was kind of stressful because the parents didn't understand why the questions got so hard. And it was because your, your child is answering questions correctly. So it's trying to reach and stretch and see, you know, oh, how much do you know? Okay, so that was a little high, so let's bring it back down. So at the end of that 34 questions, or in the case of the early literacy, 27 questions, they will get a score, all right? And that's what the teachers will, will work from and, um, and move forward with. And that that's where they can see the growth and, and all of that. Um, well, this isn't necessarily, so this isn't necessarily like a test where if you got a, a couple of them wrong, it's nothing you have to really stress about because it's really, you know, just adjusting your learning zone. So it wants to see how far it could take you. And it says, okay, I got to bring it back a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And everybody gets questions wrong. That's part of the directions that the teachers will be reading is your everybody, there will be questions that are too hard for you. And there will be two questions that are too easy for you. Now, the questions that Sonia finds easy and the questions that I find easy might be two different types of questions. So yes, it's supposed to figure out where, where exactly you are. How much have you learned? Okay. And again, this test is modeled based on, you know, what New York State usually gives you during a state test. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So um, let's we see. Have one more slide or yes. here we go. And just, yep, just there's a lot of information on here, but just to let you know that as the students are taking the assessment, um, each question or each item has a time limit. So the system doesn't want the student to sit and sit and sit and sit and keep trying to figure out answers to the questions. If they don't know it in the time frames listed, they just get passed to the next question and they don't get penalized. It's just, okay, you know, couldn't answer it in the time limit. So we'll just serve you up another type of question. Um, so that's fine if they have no idea um, what the answer is, if they've, uh, if they see the word decimals and they don't know what a decimal is, they can just wait, you know, if they can take a good guess, that's a good, a good strategy. But if they have no idea, you can just wait and it'll, the question will go, will go past. So that's just okay. one illustration that there's different time limits. So in, in this, um, page right now that we're looking at, it's telling you more or less what the breakdown is for time uh, for each grade. Mm -hmm. That's Great. correct for each different assessment. Awesome. So yeah, I think we have one more. Oh, just questions. Oh, just that, just any questions. So that was oh, just a, a quick, quick break. But uh, if you have any questions, be happy to answer them. We do have a question that says, um, I'm just going to read in Spanish because we're in Spanish. A mí me cuesta ayudarle con las tareas que le dejan a mi hijo del cuarto grado porque todo está en inglés. A veces ni le entiendo. Yo solo puedo, yo solo puedo español. Thank you so much for that. Luis is saying that, you know, that um, sometimes it's really hard to do homework because, or to help his child because it's in Spanish. So, I mean, it's in English, but, you know, they don't understand um, English. They only speak Spanish. That's okay. So here's my take on it. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get to the home part. If your child is taking star at home, don't help them. <laughs> don't help That's them. right. Absolutely. Don't help them. Don't they'll help. Get, they'll get, yep. It's okay. <laughs> Not at it's all because okay. they'll, they'll be getting two hard questions. If you're helping them, the questions are only going to get harder. <laughs> exactly. So do not help your child. It's okay. This test is allowing us to see where we need to continue to work with your child. So one of the parents here wrote, um, so this is this more for helping the teacher then, or is it helping the student? It's helping the teacher help the student. So it's, it's assessing the student's um, current functioning level in their instruction. And that helps the teacher provide materials, provide support, provide challenges for students um, who, who need it. So um, it's not teaching the students, 
Um, it's not assessing them on what they've learned in the last couple of months specifically. Um, so it's, it's really assessing at a where they are so that the teacher knows how to best um, provide the instruction. I, I think that that's something really important. So I'm just going to translate what you just said, because I, I think it's extremely important what you said that este examen no es solamente para ayudar a los, los maestros. El, el, el examen lo que hace es que puede identificar áreas de donde los maestros pueden poder a, enfocarse para ayudar a sus niños. Así que es muy importante que dejen a los niños que no lo ayuden cuando estén en la casa para que ellos puedan demostrar lo que ellos, lo que ellos saben para que los maestros puedan instruir a los niños exactamente en las áreas que ellos necesitan enfocarse. So it's really important that you do let your child, um, you know, take the test on their own. And then also, um, you will know when we do have star testing, they, there are screening windows and your teachers will, the students know when they're happening and the, the teachers also. So definitely just reach out to your teachers about that. I would also say, Sonia, that not only do the teachers use the data and the information, but the district looks at the data to say, how is all the curriculum? Maybe we're, we're using new textbooks. Maybe we're using a new reading series. Maybe we've got some um, computer programs that we're using. And are they helping the areas that need we need help in? So we might identify, they might identify that third graders across the board are having a problem with a certain domain, a certain skill. Exactly. And so they might say, what, how can we provide that skill for the students? Maybe we can get a, a different series, text series, we can get a computer program to help support. So, so the district uses it to look across all of the buildings and across grade levels as well. That's great. Thank you for giving insight on that. I think it's important for families to know um, what, are being utilized to assess you know children and like you said this is not being graded for them this is not how they're being taught this is more of a getting a gauge as to where they are and like you said this is being used in many districts in the area over 20 districts in the area are using the same exact tool so it shows that it's something that definitely um is something that we that is found to be effective in helping students so it's definitely things that we continue to monitor um, in terms of the data and everything. So thank you for that. I did get a question in the chat saying, I see that this is being recorded. Where can I find the recording after the presentation is finished? All the recordings can be found on the Family University page on the district website. So usually it'll take um, a couple, we will try to upload it as soon as we can. And you will be able to access the presentation as well as this recording. And then if you do feel like you'd have other questions, or if maybe later on when you are listening to this recording, you say, oh, I have another question, definitely reach out to your building. So they're more than happy to assist you with that. So Family University page, just responding to that. Um, let's see, is it a must that they have to take this test? The district does have everybody in the district take the test, no matter what program or yes. Yeah. We do. Everyone does have to take the test. Now, if your child is coming from another country, they do have the option, or if they're coming from a different language background, they do have the option to be able to take it. Um, I think in particular in the bilingual classes, they're allowed to take it in Spanish. So they are able to be assessed in both languages to see which is their stronger language. I believe that was the case. But again, if you have to reach out to your building and your teachers to get more information on that. So thank you so much, Carolyn, for this presentation. I really appreciate oh, you, welcome. you know, just giving us this insight and letting us know exactly what is going on. And I think it's invaluable coming from someone who works in the region, you know, to give this kind of information because you not only see what's happening in our district, but in other districts as well. And you're able to let us know, hey, this is what's going on everywhere. And that's really important because we wanna make sure that we are aligned with our neighbors. We have great districts around us and we are just as great as all of them. And we wanna make sure that we are up to par with them. So thank you so you much for this absolutely. information. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome, Sonia. And I'm going to take my experience here and share it with another district who I know wants to start to get their feet wet with this kind of family university. So thank this you. is great. You are definitely one of the leaders in this area uh, on, on keeping parents abreast of what's, what's happening in the community. 
I appreciate that. We have a, we have a fantastic team of people that work with us here at East Rampo and I, and I, it's a privilege working with them, I would have to say. So I, speaking of uh, teams, I am so happy that, you know, we were talking about Dr. Ellis earlier. Dr. Ellis, how are you? Good, good, good. Hi, Sonia. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for inviting me and, and happy new year to everybody. I'm Dr. Ellis. I'm the superintendent of the district. Um, Sonia, great job. Uh, family University is super important. It's a way to communicate and let the family know about the resources that's available to all their children. And I think for today in particular, learn about the Star Renaissance exam. It, it talks about the importance of helping our children build resilience. Uh, as Sonia said, do not help your children when they're taking these exams. These are what we call formative exams. Some of them are the state exams that are high state. This is a, a way for us to know what your children need and what the teachers need to, to help them uh, perform better in the long run. So in the long run, we want them to be a well-rounded student to not just be able to pass the test. So um, I'm really, really happy that, you know, the turnout is so great tonight. And I hope, Sonia, that you reach your mark for the participants <laughs> tonight. So um, thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to, to seeing you each month uh, during Family University. Thanks again, Sonia. Thank you so much, Dr. Ellis. Welcome. So with that, I, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited that we were able to talk about this because again, it, it is important. And I, I just, Maria, gracias. Maria dice gracias por la información, es muy importante. Yes, I, I also feel that it's very important. I also feel it's really important for, we actually feel that it's important for our families to also be aware of what's going on in the district, you know, and be able to ask these questions as well. So now here's, here's the next question. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a quick poll. Okay, because you know, I like hearing your feedback or seeing your feedback. Let's see, understanding STAR. Yay, I totally got it. Did you get it? Do you understand why we're doing this? Do you see why STAR is being used? Okay, and, and this is um, like understanding, like why, why is it so important? Like what's the big deal with STAR? Or I hear you, I get it, but I need more info because it's just, I'm not, I'm not getting it. You know, but I, I, I want to explore this further or you know, I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, we have to talk about that. I really have no idea what you're talking about. Like star what in the sky. So it's like, it's, that's fine too. Either way, it is totally fine because that just gives us an understanding of where we need to continue to communicate with our families. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad 72% of people are saying, yay, I totally get it. Okay, so just to, para traducirlo un poco, ¿cuál es tu entendimiento ahora mismo de, del examen de STAR? Okay, ¿lo entiendes? Cuando dice, yay, I totally got it, eso quiere decir que sí, lo entiendo. Or, te escucho, I hear you, but I need more info. Necesito más información, como que te entiendo, pero todavía necesito más información para completamente comprenderlo. O, yo no entiendo nada de, 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 de qué te estás hablando, así que... Vamos a tener que empezar de nuevo. No entiendo absolutamente nada. Uh, you know, how are we feeling about STAR so far? And so far, uh, we've had quite a few people, you know, put in their, um, their poll questions. Let's check out the, the, the Q&A area. It says, oh, we have a busing question, okay? Hola, buenas noches. Una pregunta en el bus que todos los niños van a montados en donde se cumpla el distan distan distanciamiento. Ok, uh, buena pregunta. Para preguntas así es muy importante que se comuniquen con um, el Departamento de Transportación. For questions about busing, it's really important that you reach out to the Transportation Department. They will be more than happy to give you more information. Please be patient. I know sometimes you're like, I call, I got a voicemail, leave a voicemail. You know, and, and then we can go ahead and give you a call back or you can email, or you can actually speak to somebody in your building and they can also find additional ways to reach out. So definitely keep communicating this information. Um, you know, our main priority is making sure that your children are safe. So definitely always voice um, what you're feeling so that we can be able to help you feel more comfortable with your child, especially traveling. It's kind of a big deal. So definitely um, reach out to your building or the transportation department. All right, so we have 71%, look at that, consistently, 71% of people are totally getting it. That's great to hear. Some of them are saying, I hear you, but I need more info. That's great. Three people said, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's, that's totally fine, because that was me for a long time. Like, you know, I don't get it, but that's okay, because we're going to get it together. 
So I'm going to end the poll right there. And now we're going to talk a little bit about social emotional. Okay. So social emotional is not just about, you know, the feelings because feelings are important. Actually. Yeah. You know what? Let's do that. How is everyone feeling in the chat area? Let us know. How did you feel on Friday? Friday was a remote learning day for our students. It was a, an important day for us to be able to, you know, really assess ourselves. Where are we as a district and how can we continue to help your children? So we did have a remote learning day and we were able to learn a lot that we're just going to continue to improve upon. So we want to know how are, is everyone else feeling? Does anyone want to add it to the chat? You know, just a little break or how are you feeling this afternoon? You know, what's going on? Is everything going good? Um, I'm not seeing anybody say anything yet, but that's okay. Um, you know, it's really important that we make sure that we, oh, Mary Mora dice que está excelente, que bueno. Me, eso, me hace sentir muy feliz que está bien. Um, se puede decir como ustedes de muy bien. Gracias. Y ustedes como están. Gracias, María. Sí, estamos bien. Gracias a Dios. Estamos aquí y um, dando la información. Así que nosotros siempre nos divertimos aquí en la Universidad Familiar. We always have fun here in Family University. So thank you. Um, great. So let me check the, the Q&A. Good. All right. Blessed. Maria, Melissa's feeling blessed. Very good. That's awesome, Maria. Vila also feel muy bien, que bueno. Um, estoy feliz que ustedes están bien, because that's really important, just to take a minute to say, I feel good. But now, let's think about, you know, remembering that kind of attitude and that kind of emotion. But like sometimes you're dealing with emotional management when you're supporting your child taking a test, you know? That's really stressful sometimes. Your child is taking a test. You know, they might be feeling anxiety. You might be feeling stress and anxiety. How do we manage those emotions? So now this is a presentation that we actually gave last spring when we were doing state testing. We had one of our academic science facilitators, Samantha Shearer, who is an ASF or academic science facilitator for El Dorado, one of our awesome schools. And the biggest thing for, you know, she went ahead and she explained to everybody about what the different type of tests that we have in the district, but also managing emotions. So understanding the thought patterns that trigger anxiety can help you develop strategies to target specific concerns. So you have to try asking yourself these questions. How do you feel when you first see the test? So think about like how your child first feels or, you know, talk to your child. How do you feel when you first see your test? What's your biggest worry when you take these tests? Do you feel worried when you think about a test or only when you see the test? You know, have these conversations with your children. See what is stressing them out about these tests because maybe they need to understand how STAR works as well. That STAR isn't, you know, going to penalize you, but it's going to help you in the long run. And sometimes taking that tension off can make you feel a lot more relaxed, okay? We wanna make sure that we encourage our kids to use positive talk, you know? Like a lot of times we hear our kids say, I can't do this, I don't wanna do this, no, it's so hard, or I'm gonna fail, or I, I can't even say because my kid thinks it's like the bad word, really bad word. She says it's called, it's the S word to her. The I am stupid, really bad. <laughs> so. You know, sometimes your kids think these thoughts, but we don't want them to talk like that. So we want to encourage our kids to talk to their brain, okay, by replacing those negative thoughts with positive ones. So having them say, I can do this, or I got this, or I'll do my best and I'll pass the test. You know, I'm going to work hard. So I am smart. Okay. So you're not stupid because you worked hard. And that means you're smart because you are working hard. So these things are really important. Start replacing those negative thoughts with positive ones and just changing and shifting their mindset completely. In vez de decir, no, yo no puedo hacer esto, dígale que sí, sí se puede hacer, okay? Que voy a, no voy a poder a pasar este examen, sí, vas a hacer lo mejor que usted pueda y vas a pasar el examen. So you're going to continue with that attitude, okay? Then we have teaching relaxation strategies, deep breaths. You know, counting to 10, stretching, massaging your hands. I do that a lot and I end up cracking all my fingers and it drives everybody crazy. So, I, you know, massaging your fingers, visualizing your favorite place that is calming and relaxing. All right, let's think about that. What, what is everybody's favorite thing to, where's everybody's favorite place to go? In the chat, what is the most relaxing place for you right now? In the chat, dígame cuál es el sitio más relajante en su mente. 
Carolyn, what's the most uh, relaxing place you could think of right now? Besides, oh, the I think the beach that's right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> that okay. way, the beach, Just right? Some, some waves, yep, some waves. Yeah. That's all I need. Mary dice el parque, you know, the park. Kareen also agrees with you. The beach is relaxing. Miss Dr. Lowe as well, the beach also. Sometimes you just have to think about these things just because just thinking about it, you know, then you think, okay, what does it sound like at the beach? What do I see when I'm at the beach? What is happening around me? And all of a sudden you're like, okay, I feel a little bit more relaxed. Like, all right, I got this. You know, the majority of the times, whenever I feel tense, you know, I think about being in Dominican Republic in my grandmother's house and I'm just like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm calm, cool and collected. Kareem, yes, a blue sky that always works as a blue sky. So thinking about these different things is definitely um, important. So then we also have, you know, other strategies. We have little kids and at home and we have a lot of, um, people who need to want to be able to hear these things and we have you know go noodle is a great resource i know that when we we talked about this before we actually had um our students like i had my daughters come on and we talked about going through a go noodle you know calming youtube playlist and they have a great playlist if i was to click on this which you'll be able to see later on they have a complete YouTube playlist that talks about, you know, learn how to let go, learn how to be a team player, learn to build patience, learn how to find peace, um, learn to rest well. People just sometimes they just need to rest. I, I mean, have, you, have you ever seen that video where the little kid is going crazy and the little girl's like, did you take a nap? <laughs> like you need a nap. Sometimes you need to nap to relax. Um, rainbow breathing. I don't know if you know what rainbow breathing is. Rainbow breathing is like this, you know? get like opening up your your lungs you know growing strength and confidence so there's so many great um videos here that you can use that you could watch with your child and you can actually take part in that so it's always a lot of fun to do that um let's see let me go back to my thing here so you know just these kinds of videos is always great um and then i i have this video so i'm gonna let you guys watch this video just so you guys can see you know, we're going to find a little bit of inner peace right now. Okay. So this one is a breathing one and it's to relieve anxiety. Think about it. Sit or stand up straight. Take a deep breath and follow along. Think of a place There's where you beach. know that there is a little peace, a little calm at home, in your classroom, at a friend's house, in nature, at camp. Your body may not always be able to go to that place, but your mind can go there. Practice. Imagine that quiet place, that peaceful place. Picture what it's like to really be there. Can you see yourself? Can you feel your body there? in your peaceful place, rest your hands, rest your feet. Maybe let your chin drop just a tiny bit. Be there in your mind. On the inside, you can find peace no matter where you are. Peace out. So that's just a relaxing video that, you know, you could just play with your child and both of you guys can just get to a spot where you're like, okay, we're, we could both do this. So that's, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about the Glow Noodle series. And, and that was really fun to talk about and share. The other thing is preparing your child for, for challenges. You know, some children, they study with questions and it causes a panic mid test. So they, they start to like panic a lot. So prepare your child that it's okay not to know the answers. It's okay to get things wrong. Um, it, you know, just, you'll just relax yourself and don't take it so hard. Just take a deep breath. Like it says here, take a deep breath and try eliminating as many answers as you can and just do your best. It's all about doing your best at the end of the day. So don't ever, you know, harbor on a question that you might not be able to answer because, you know, that's how you're able to grow. 
um, you know, bolstering your confidence, preparing, uh, help feeling your, helping your child feel confident in both school and other areas in your life can help them feel secure and less likely to be anxious. You know, just constantly tell your child, it's okay. You can do it. You're going to be fine. We're going to do this together. We're good. Well, not the test. Don't do start together, but <laughs> everything else in life, like we're here, we're going to get through this academic year together. We're going to, everything is going to be okay because at school, we're doing the same thing. We're encouraging your children and letting them know that we believe in them and that we know that they're going to succeed in what they do so that we definitely want to make sure that we continue to have that conversation with them. And then, you know, obviously put the test in test in perspective, you know, tell the child to take um, that it's not going to make their future. It's not going to make or break you these different things. Let's not think about what can happen that can go wrong. But let's think about, you know, where we can go. You know, if, if you don't do too great in the test, okay, that means that we know where to work. And that's it. It takes off the load off your shoulders when you really put into perspective what it is that this test is asking you for or any test. So does anyone have any questions about, you know, the, uh, the you know, these anxieties and things like that and really dealing with the social emotional? Patricia, I see you said the, the student, they think the kids needed to enjoy the snow day instead of remote learning. Okay, um, thank you for your feedback on that. We really appreciate your feedback. Um, you know, well, it, it's New York. <laughs> we're probably gonna, I think we're getting more snow this weekend, right? I heard there was more snow. I'm not gonna lie, snow is um, a lot of work. <laughs> but yes, I, I actually love snow days as well. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get out there and enjoy being out in, in the snow and just making snow angels and snow <laughs> it's always fun um yes we do have the the recording will be on if anyone did miss anything we will be posting this on the district website and um we will be able to have that information there so we have now let me just check in our chat area oh we got a lot of common places here edgar says that he feels relaxed in un gimnasio in the gym i'm not gonna lie edward you I can't join you on that. <laughs> you might be on your own on that for me, but I do know a lot of people that do feel more relaxed in the gym. So sometimes they just need to get it out, you know, all that energy, and then they feel like, okay, I, I can get that out. I totally get that. So always focus on things that relax you. And um, that's about it. So we've reached the end of Family University. It is now seven o'clock. I want to say thank you so much to Carolyn. Thank you so much uh, for being here, being part of Family University, and just you know helping us understand what STAR is. Um, I'd like to say thank you, of course, to our translators that are here, Vicente and also Roosevelt, for always being here to make sure that our community is getting the understanding that they need in their language so they can be able to be part of the conversation. Um, I also want to thank, hi, Vicente. I also want to thank um, Bob and Gandhi and the MIS department for always making sure that we promote Family University and that we are constantly connected and have all the resources that we need in order to make these um, to make these presentations for you. And then, of course, I really want to be able to thank our administration, including Dr. Ellis, of course, our superintendent, who is always supporting us in Family University. Um, our CNI team, you know, led by Missy Waha, Dr. West, Miss Walker, Miss Barrow, the entire team. Thank you so much, and of course, to our monitors, Dr. Lowe, Dr., uh, Mr. Singer. So we just have so many people to thank. So I, I really am appreciative to every single one of you for making Family University work. And of course, we could not do any of this without the support of our community. So thank you so much to our community for coming out and for showing up always. Y gra muchísimas gracias a nuestra comunidad por siempre estar aquí y siempre estar presente para sus niños. Así que gracias por todo y que tengan una buena noche. Thank you to all and have a wonderful night. Goodbye.